Okay, well, I mentioned that the Commission for Women had uh, done a report, and so this yeah. is, that's their, that's their report. So then finally, when Title IX came along, it required that all school systems do an assessment of what was, well, what the status of their school system was. And so this one was ours. It was called the Institutional Self-Evaluation. Mm -hmm. Every school had to do it, and there was some forms that you had to fill. So literally, I went around and interviewed dozens and dozens and dozens of people in the school system and got their impression on um, what was the status of, of girls, women, if we were talking about the personnel department. Oh, that reminds me. Um, okay, so nowadays um, affirmative action and all sorts of employment records is, you know, very much... Well, at that time this was a very new idea and so um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll do a little assessment here. And so I tallied up how many male principals there were and how many female principals there were and how many of this and how many of that. And I made a presentation to the, um, uh, the uh, uh, superintendent. Hmm. And he and his, his colleagues sat around and they looked at this and they said, Bonnie, where did you get this data? They said, well, I just looked in the phone book and counted. And that was about the level of sophistication that <laughs> the uh, early affirmative action um, wow. consciousness raising went on it. Yeah. And uh, the school system has a kind of an interesting situation in, in, with elementary principals. You've got like 100, used to be 120 schools, there's probably 160 now. And not all of them had assistant principals. So basically the real key was to become an assistant principal because out of this much smaller number, came this very much mm -hmm. bigger number. It wasn't mm -hmm. the usual pyramid like most kind of employment situations were. <laughs> so what happened then was that the few male teachers that they did have in the elementary schools got zooped up into these um, few um, assistant principals and they were pretty much guaranteed that they were going to you know, get promoted. Mm -hmm. And obviously some women had to be promoted too, but they usually didn't come quite in that same sort of career path. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, you can imagine how surprised these people were, said, were when I said, oh, I just counted them up out of the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, it might not be, you know, 100% accurate, but I can guarantee you that this is, oh. this is the trend. <laughs> well, what did they find? I mean, do you remember when when um, when the schools looked into their curricula, when they looked into the way time is spent in the school day, all of those yeah. questions. Well, it, it, it all sounds very cliche now because, of course, the women were very absent from the social studies curriculum and um, the, um, uh, the sports programs were behind and so forth. But Fairfax County did move very quickly and I think it, um, hopefully I had something to do with prodding them along, but also after all, Fairfax prides itself on being an excellent school system, and it became very quick, very apparent very quickly in education circles that you were not an excellent school system. If you didn't have, you know, 14 sports for girls to participate in, and mm -hmm. if you didn't have um, open entry to all of your courses for your, um, for your students, you know, none of this girls in, in home ec and boys in whatever anymore, yeah. that kind of thing. And, um, Oh, when the um, uh, Thomas Jefferson School for Science and Technology opened, it was very much in everyone's mind of, oh, you know, we've got to make sure that girls can apply for this too. Oh, so um, one of my very interesting jobs was to be on the part of the selection committee. Now, of course, you've got, oh, what, 800 or 1,200 kids who are applying for this, to, and there are maybe 400 slots. So, and each child has to write three little essays, plus fill out some other stuff. Mm -hmm. So somebody has to read, um, th you know, three times 1,200 essays <laughs> written by eighth graders. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? Anyway, we're all divided up into committees, and it's very... That's a lot of work. work. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of reading. A lot of, a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. But it was very interesting. In the very first batch... Um, when they'd ask for activities uh, that supported your interest in, in going to this school, mm -hmm. math and science, and you'd have a little girl saying, well, I really like to play with my brother's chemistry set. You know, okay, well, things improved a bit, and pretty soon you had girls who were going to space camp and girls who had their own chemistry set right. and who had participated in the science fairs and so forth. So 
but I do remember that very, very poignantly, you know, well, I really like to play with my brothers. Yeah, yeah. wow. Um, and then another batch of essays were interesting in that uh, one of the questions was, if you would like to, if you could invent something that would, that you would be proud of, what kind of a thing would you like to invent? You know? hmm. So, okay, we had boys and they were all going to invent some kind of machine and it was going to do this and they'd go into all the details about the, the bells and whistles on the machine and how the machine was going to be put together and it was going to do this and it was going to go to the moon and da 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 da. <laughs> and, then, and then at the bottom they'd say, oh it, well it would be helpful to people. And the girls' essays, and I, this was this it documented in numbers of essays that I read, but 80% of the girls' essays would be, well I'm going to invent a machine and it's going to help people get along and it's going to help world poverty and it's going to help people get food and it's going to help babies and it's going to help and there was no emphasis on the machine aspect but all of it on the Effect. interpersonal relations and mm -hmm. and how it was going to help people and the boys essays again about an 80 20 split were very focused on the gears and so forth of the machine and yeah it would be good for people <laughs> yeah and um actually uh, I was part of a group that did a presentation at an international conference um, in Israel um, a year or two after I did that, had that particular experience and I, I wrote that up and that was part of our presentation of, you know, uh, the, this particular different way that girls saw science mm -hmm. and of course that's been documented by a lot of um, mm -hmm. college studies okay, now. That, 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 yeah women like to see science as something that is really helpful to people mm -hmm. um, and they can do the science. I mean we have a lot of women who are really very good in science now but um, in math yeah. but they want to make sure that it's going to do, do something, something positive in the world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Not just science for science sake yeah. really for them. Yeah. yeah.